Welcome to Epilogue Podcast, the show where we discuss some stuff that happened on a different show ages ago which nobody really cares about anymore. Hi, I'm Port Ponky. And I'm LeBlanc. Today, we're discussing Farscape, Season 3, Episode 3, Self-Inflicted Wounds, Part 1, Coulda, Woulda, Shoulda. Moya becomes spliced with a Pathfinder ship, and John's loyalties are tested. This episode's kind of a bummer. It's not the happiest episode, no. In fact, was there anything happy about this? Harvey. I liked seeing Harvey and that he was annoyed. Uh, but that was that, me being happy. Yeah, that wasn't <laughs> the characters. John was happy when he was flying around in the wormhole. He got a uh, bit of buzz from that. He was excited. That's a positive emotion. Okay, then we saw that John was happy. This episode feels very much like um, the first part of a multi-parter. All set up. Yeah, it, this no whole payoff. episode feels like set up. It just kind of stops. There's nothing that concludes here. There's nothing satisfying to tie this up. Not even a smaller plot thread that could start and end here. This is all set up. Well, there's a huge reveal at the end. Or d did you not pick up on that? Uh, yes, I did, but you should explain it. <laughs> Are you talking about the fish people? I don't know what to call them. No. She, what, the leader told another, hey, they must not know your true mission, so they're doing something underhanded. That's not what I was talking about. John, looking through the Pathfinder machine seeing all the images oh that they're from his memory what okay i did not interpret that scene correctly he's using the pathfinder record thing to look at the images from across the universe yes so it seems like you missed the big reveal at the end and okay I... the way i interpreted it is that he was told it it collected data from around the universe, but then he saw the Three Stooges and other stuff that he's seen, and I took it as he was lied to, and it's actually pulling from his memory, and they don't have the technology they are talking about. But when did he see all of that other stuff? It's all random things that we haven't seen before. Oh, uh, I thought... <laughs> the. The two images before that were slow, right before Three Stooges, I thought they were stuff we've seen, dancers. I don't think or so. whatever. Okay, well, no, I'm no, way no. off. No, yeah, so he's seen the Three Stooges, which means... They know of Earth. Uh, yeah, well... There's a Three Stooges race. <laughs> I would say they've been in the vicinity of Earth. Pretty good. Representation of Earth. The Three Stooges? Yep. Uh, sadly, yes. So I was not paying enough attention, and I didn't get that. They didn't really explain it. They told him to take that thing around to measure the, to measure the positions on the wormhole. I got too caught up in the they must not know your true mission line, and then the fact that the recorder thing was with John the whole time. And so I linked those things in my uh, interpretation. That's fine. They, they really didn't explain what that was. I was fine being confused because I knew there was more to come and whatever I got wrong, I knew it would be smoothed out. But now I know I'm wrong ahead of time. Thanks. Well, don't take my word for it. Except, do. I can tell you another part that I didn't understand, and that's when okay. Stark told Aaron she's beautiful. 
<laughs> that was really creepy. I did not understand. And then her response didn't make any sense to me. Bringing up Zan and how she's not Zan. I thought, did I miss a scene or, or some lines of dialogue? I don't understand this. So Zan's dying. Yeah. Stark sort of emotionally reliant on her. Okay, I'm with you still. Stark's insane. Got that. Stark said Aaron was very beautiful. Okay, you lost me. Yeah, I don't really connect the dots either. I thought maybe there was something about uh, taking the life force of a beautiful person to save Zan. I don't. I could not connect it. I didn't get it. Stark's just rebounding hard and has deep-seated emotional problems. I think Aaron was just trying to ground him. Okay. I I can deal with that. I'm pretty sure Aaron could kick his ass if needed, but it's still creepy as anything. Zan is looking pretty gross. Her head's all sticky. Nice shade of red, though. Yeah, that was new, wasn't it? She's looking more dead-like, I guess. I don't, we haven't seen her kind die like yes, this. Yes, we have. Not like this, though. No, not like this. The other interior was defrosted. And had a terrible scream. Uh, yes, that melts things. I'm assuming that comes into play later, because that was a weird detail to keep reminding us. Uh, did she do it? Yeah, she did it twice, didn't she? She melted part of the Pathfinder ship as well. And then her hair turned red. She's kind of annoying. I would go further then, kind of. <laughs> did you catch her name? Jules. That's what John called her, Jewel. Yeah. yeah. I did like that she was offended at the idea of a shortened version of her name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's probably going to have a bad time. In school? It just, because of her name? With her life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Interestingly, she didn't die. I kept waiting for vomit. I, I got it with Pilot, but I was waiting for her to vomit. Oh, about the Pilot vomit. A little behind-the-scenes uh, scrap. You may have noticed that Stark got all over his face. He did, yes. I was going in his mouth and everything. Yeah. Apparently it tasted quite good, the specific, <laughs> like custard stuff they used. Looked good on screen. It was very, very green. It kind of looked weird. I, I didn't really... Very like... green and very... Uh, viscous. Uh, yeah, viscous. It wasn't chunky like I expect vomit to be. What does Pilot even eat? I guess he must have some sort of, like, tube... He has a feeding tube that feeds him green slime. That seems most likely. So now Pilot has sort of died. And Moya is dying. Everyone's taking their turn. Do you mean taking their turn to feign death or to die? Yeah, to either die and be resurrected or feign death. So you think Pilot and Moya will be A-OK? -okay? You know, I I can't tell. I could see them actually killing them off. And I like that I can't figure it out, that they've gotten to a point where I could see them making that choice. Usually with this sort of thing, it's obvious, okay, everyone's going to be fine. No one's going to die. But I I don't know. I can't say with confidence either way. That's a fine line to tread. Um, this show is always a little bit unpredictable, so you never quite know for sure. Oh, one thing I know for sure is that Scorpius isn't dead, and they keep saying it. He said it this episode, too. Well, John asked Harvey, and Harvey said, <laughs> You must be joking. But I could also see them healing everyone, and everything's hunky-dory. But not without consequences. Even if everyone lives, something bad will happen. 
what bad thing will happen? Rigel will get pregnant. <laughs> Jewel, Jewel will die. That's not a bad thing. Uh, well, I guess. She's useful. How? She tried to kill Crichton and accidentally found the key section on the shield of Dago's ship he found. That's being useful by accident. I, I was stretching the definition, yes. Severely stretching the definition. <laughs> they tied her up and gagged her. Took too long to be gagged. I did enjoy Rigel knocking her out. Rigel is a little... Uh, I don't want to use too strong language, but he was being pretty reprehensible. Why do you say that? Because he tried to abandon everyone to their deaths. He's a dominar. He has to stay alive. That's not even a good way of staying alive. John's module <laughs> is like... Not reliable. It, yeah, it's like comparing a modern car to like an oxen pulled cart. It gets the job done. It jams in wormholes. That's why you exit the wormhole. John was pretty rubbish in this episode as well. He's blinded by wormholes, as Aaron said. He really is. It's not like deep down he still has their best wishes at heart. And he's secretly a really great guy. No, he's really into wormholes. He's really into returning to the life he knew via wormholes. Which is why I like that little speech by Rigel so much. You called him reprehensible, but what he said is true in that they're not really friends. They were just thrown together by circumstance, and they all just want to return to something familiar of the life they knew. True. That doesn't justify what he was suggesting. No, it doesn't, but I like that it was brought up. It's easy to forget where this show started and think of them as this little family having an outing in a ship. A ragtag and extremely dysfunctional family. Yeah, family. Sure. They kind of are friends. Well, all, all friends are usually friends by circumstance. I'd say they're pretty decent friends, some of them. Yeah, I don't know why I quantified it. That makes sense. I'm, I'm blinded by Rigel. Well, usually people are friends due to positive circumstances, not being escaped criminals who are <laughs> on it down together. I can't speak from experience. I'll have to try it out and get back to you. What were the Pathfinders up to then? What's the secret mission that Shrina is going on? Uh, well, what I had in mind was way off. Excellent. What did you have in mind? No, that's what I talked about earlier. How they were lying to John. Oh. In service of what? I don't know, because that would be a weird plan. So Sh Shrina is the one that didn't want to go on the mission because it would cost her her life. Yes. And Niala said, we'll just do it anyway, or your family will die. Which is a bit of a hollow threat. So what was she? What's her secret mission? Oh, to steal all of their data. She's still going to be disappointed then. Yeah, there won't be much there. And steel that... pilot. Steel pilot? He's well, got info bouncing around in that shell head. Yeah, he's pretty unique as well. Plus that vomit is tasty. Uh, that that's not canon. He's gonna as far as you know. Oh, that's true. Well, Dago and Stark seem pretty revulsed by it. There's a a, a snake flying around. That was weird. And then it would turn into a ghost snake sometimes. Yes. When it felt like it, I guess. Presumably, it's something to do with 
wormhole stuff. They said it lived in a certain part of the wormhole. And we got a good visual reminder of how dangerous pilot's room is. Insanely dangerous. You could trip and die. Considering that they went to Starburst in this episode and the whole ship lunged to the side, if anyone had been walking on any of the platforms in pilot's chamber, they would have been definitely killed. That's his plan. Uh, to slowly kill the crew? through bad health and safety? I think we've talked about this. We have. But you can't be obvious when you want to murder a whole crew. Then just Starburst into a sun or something. He doesn't want to die. Oh, yeah. That's... Right, yeah. He's not I, I, I'm not kamikaze. a psychopath. I'm not good at this whole murdering people thing. They gotta die or something. Why not murder by pilot? It's... It's the rule of cool. It it just looks cool. That means other aspects of it can not make as much sense as they need to. Also, the Pathfinder ship looked really cool. I love designs that are outside of the very typical spaceship designs. Even if they don't make sense, I don't care. If it looks cool, then I'm okay with that. Uh... It's a good design. It looked like a, a a spiral or a sort of DNA strand or something covered in spikes. If it's a space-only vessel, it doesn't matter too much how the shape is, what the shape is, as long as the engines can propel it without tearing it apart. Which means you should make it look cool. I wouldn't say you should. But it's certainly an option. It's the only option. It, it makes a change from airplanes in space. Yeah. They're pretty good with weird ship designs on this show. Most of the ones that are very airplane-like are ones that go into atmosphere. Dargo was being very... Uh, emo? I was going to say introspective, but yeah, emo. One part I liked a lot was in the earlier section of the episode. He says he's not ready to talk about it. And then I thought, uh, does that mean this is going to happen later in the episode? But it's not brought up later in the episode. Well, I mean, sort of, but not between him and Aaron. And if that happens as part of this multi-part thing, fine. But I was glad it, it was brought up. He says, I don't want to talk about it. And then it's, it doesn't return in this episode. The common response to that is, have you tried talking about it? <laughs> and then they say, oh, well, I guess after all, I did want to talk about it. Yeah. So they just cut that short. No, I'm not ready. Which is fair. People say that. People aren't going to conveniently be aligned with the question. People have feelings and feel bad about things and don't want to talk about them. It just doesn't happen that much on other shows. Or often it happens for things that are really um, like convoluted plot reasons. Like someone won't be able to tell that someone else is a secretly a bad guy or something because they yeah. have too many emotions. And it's really kind of constipated writing. I also liked his line, that relationship does not exist. I thought that was so interesting to state it that way. It's harsh. Is he going through the five stages of um, grief? Well, it's different for Luxons. This is just two stages or something? Angry and then emo? Yeah. So he's on emo now. Yeah, we saw it with Jathi too. He was angry and then he... Yeah, you're right. Two stages of Lux and grief. And then there's never acceptance. You just harbor that anger forever. But it slowly erodes, but it never disappears. That is the true emo way. The emo harnesses the anger and puts a lot of pressure on it, so it becomes a diamond. An angry diamond? Is Dargo going to... Start wearing black. Well, no. 
do you have a quote from this episode which you would like to share? I long for the dumpster. <laughs> is is Harvey uh, surpassing Rigel for one liners? I say that that's just one so far. But he has the least screen time out of anyone in this episode. Yes, because he's a personality defect in John's head. <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever really get a chance to pull a quote from him that I liked a lot, but here we go. Poor Harvey. Well, I mean, not really. The idea that he's a prisoner in John's head is really funny to me. It's a reversal of the relationship. One that I would never expect. You think, oh, someone got implanted with something. It's going to terrorize them until it's removed. And he was removed, sort of, but he's still there. And he was able to overcome him. And now he bullies him in his own head. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Yeah. I love it. Scorpius spent... A good season trying to get into John's head, and well, now he's in there. John's not letting him out. The idea is funny itself, so anything they do when they visit it is funny to me. I have no idea where they're going with Harvey. I mean, I, obviously, I've seen the show before, but I, at this point, I don't know what their plans could be. He's a comedic relief. For bummer episodes like this one. Does that mean they can make more bummer episodes? Yeah, because they have a release valve in Harvey. I suppose. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. It just seems somewhat random. He's needed in an episode where you have someone talking about an endless parade of death and another character saying death isn't always a bad thing. And nose is being broken, uh, people being awakened and told to wake up and die. You need a Harvey to complain about being in a dumpster. It's mostly seemingly being used for random exposition. It's fine. I'm not. Be I sound like a, a negative. I really like this stuff with Harvey. I, th I think it's just so they can get Scorpius on screen. <laughs> yeah, that's a good reason, though. Well, yeah. I'm not complaining. I think we need to go on and find out what happens in the next part. I hope it's not such a bummer. Well, maybe I do, because then there would be more Harvey. Uh, yes. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. But let let's do. Okay, let's do it.